Hello! Craving for some more OPM stuff? Want to see some more fun circuits? How about one that can do a bit of analog arithmetic? Let's get down to business! Let's first define what we want to achieve. We want a device that takes multiple input signals and outputs the sum of those signals. To generalize, we want a circuit that can perform the following function. To perform a simple summing operation, coefficients a and b must equal 1, while c must be 0. I trust you don't know about a circuit that does this kind of function, but what about one that does half of the equation, like this? We'll start with inverting amplifier because the math is simpler. I bet you'll appreciate it. Let's first refresh your memory. We will be building this circuit. Now the question is what would happen if we added multiple inputs? A short circuit. We would do a short circuit, at least if we connected it in the same node. The negative input, in this case, is a virtual ground. This means it is at zero volts. Adding another signal at the same potential would change nothing. We can even connect additional voltage source at zero volts through a resistor. Let's build such circuit and make some experiments. For simplicity's sake, all resistors will be the same, 1 kilo ohm. I will be using RedPitaya's outputs for circuits inputs and monitoring circuits output through RedPitaya's input 1. Probe will be set to 10 times mode. Let's take a look at how the system behaves. I will set outputs to DC, 0 volts. and add a measurement for mean value on input 1 to make things easier. If I now set circuit's input 1 to some value, output mirrors that value. Let's see if it also works for input 2. It does. What would now happen if I set both to some value? Output becomes the inverse of the sum of both inputs. Technically, we have managed to achieve the desired goal of realizing the function of linear combination, where a and b are minus 1 and c is offset error. An explanation of why this works would be in order. Let's take a look at the schematic and write down some equations. Let me remind you of the Kirchhoff's current law. All currents entering a node must also exit it. Applying that in inverting input nodes, let's mark it with an X. We get. Knowing that voltage X will always be zero volts when operating normally, we can simplify too. This calculation wasn't too bad, but it took required knowledge about Kirchhoff's law that voltage X will be zero and three lines of calculations. Trivial in this case, yes, but what if I could have done it a lot faster by knowing one simple trick? Since realized function is a linear combination of any number of inputs, it can be solved for each input individually. To remind you what a linear combination is, the only things allowed are addition and multiplication by a constant. No exponents, no square roots, no multiplying of two inputs. Just addition and multiplication by a constant. This equation fits the bill. Armed with the refreshed knowledge about superposition, we can write down. This literally has no reason to be written into lines but you know, clarity and such. My point is, this is faster. If superposition can be used, you should take advantage of it. We cover an inverting adder. Now we will move on to the non-inverting one, right? False. 
I will let you do that on your own. Connect all of the inputs into the same node. Use, let's say, 10 kilo ohm resistors because it's much better than one kilo ohm. And use superposition, but you will need more steps than before. What I will tell you about is how to subtract one voltage from another, how to build a voltage subtractor or for, more formally a differential amplifier. The circuit will have to execute the following function, where A and B should be 1 and C 0. Let's tackle the problem with superposition. Observing the first case, where voltage 1 is disconnected, we get what is essentially just an inverting amplifier. Looking at the case with voltage 2 disconnected, we get a bit longer calculation. When we toss the numbers around, we get It should be apparent that if we want an equation with A and B coefficients set to 1, all resistors have to be equal. In this case, we get the final equation. As a side note, I would have to mention that this kind of mental gymnastics you would have to do if you wanted to solve equations for a non-inverting error. Let's test out the calculations and build a circuit. Let's start by playing with DC voltages for a bit. 1 volt on input 1 minus 0 0.5 volts on input equals 0 0.5 volts, indeed. How about 0 0.5 volts minus 1 volt? Minus 0 0.5 volts, correct. Let's now clear offset voltages, set amplitudes to 1 and signal generators to sign mode. Indeed, as expected, the resulting signal is a constant at 0 volts as the two inputs cancelled each other out. This almost concludes the video, but first, the outro section. Not only did you learn about adders and subtractors, I also showed you a non-trivial circuit where you can use superposition. To conclude this video, like, share and subscribe. Bye!